Hey, um, now, uh, well, we just saw three incre three matches so far in this uh, 1991 nostalgic look back at um, this Tuesday in Texas, which was a WWE pay-per-view event that took place at the Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, we saw the first three matches on the card between Bret the Hitman Hart doing a successful title run against Skinner. Uh, we saw the the madcap craziness that was going on between the Macho Man Randy Savage and Jake the Snake Roberts. And then, of course, we just saw a powerhouse contest between the Warlord and the British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith, with Davey Boy Smith coming out the winner. Um, we had to stop because my video line was being paused, so... What we're going to do now is we're going to do the second part, and we've got uh, three more, three more uh, sections to do. We're going to go to five of seven uh, right now. We're going to go and look for that. Uh, where are we? Go six of seven. Okay, here we go, and away we go. We're gonna. So we got a victory win for Davy Boy Smith over. Oh, Britannia! Yeah, it's like we're gonna add some some vinegar to that fish and chips. One, two. Three count. Baby Boy Smith's the winner. We were all appalled by what took place following the match between the Macho Man Randy Savage and Jake the Snake Robert. You heard and the here's an irate Randy Savage. Randy oh, Savage is not very happy. Careful. Don't crush the collar there, Savage. Worst day of my life. You should never lay your hands on Elizabeth. Okay. No, you don't want to enter Randy Savage's dark side. There's no stopping me now. Well, what do you want? An earlobe? Oh yeah. So he, he's not gonna take shit from no one. Oh, he's even he's even punching himself. Mm -hmm. Ray Savage is angry. You just stay away. All right, we got more next. We have it sounds like the million dollar man Ted DiBiase's theme music is coming. 
All right, we're gonna we're gonna see a tag match with with Ted DiBiase and um, and uh, the Repo Man. And oh, that they also got Sensational Sherry in the corner too. Yeah, the Repo Man, the guy who looks like a hamburger on crack, especially with that cat burglar mask. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Your hamburgers will never be safe. Oh, it looks like he got back to, oh yeah, that's right, he did get back the million dollar belt that Virgil won from him at SummerSlam, which he got in months later. Triple Man was the first formerly smashed the demos. I mean, here we go. We got El Matador, Tito Santana, and Virgil. And Tito Santana, El Matador. Arriba. So I was like, we're going to see some tag action here. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, here we go. We're going to kick things off. Who's going to start? Who's going to start? Mm -hmm. Right there. I like, I like Sherry. She was a great trash talker. When it came to heel managers, she was probably like maybe one of the best. So it looks like we've got Taco Bell versus McDonald's up here. Ooh, okay, okay, I know. That's a little bit racist what I just said there. I'm sorry. I'm only just joking. I'm not, I, I, I got no real feelings against anyone. None. And as I said, we got here a repo man, formerly known as Smashed Demolition, against. El Matador, Tito Santana. And as like we're doing, swing the arm, doing some arm takedown moves. I guess while Barry Darcy was still under contract with WWF at the time, they decided to give him a new gimmick. Well, since there was no more demolition. And a nice executed arm drag takedown by T.L. Santana. Lone Ranger, my foot, he looks like the African Hamburglar. Rubble, rubble. Steal your burgers. Okay. Uh, one the hands. <laughs> oh, I'm gorgeous. I'm going to take her out for Halloween. And he dragged him outside. Man, it's like Repo wants to sneak under Sherry's skirt. And attack to Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase.
So Yassi wants Virgil. Or is it Virgil that's hungry for Diviasi? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, yeah, Virgil wants to get in. Okay, so no mind quits are stalling. Please, man. There. This was during around maybe around the last few stages of the Diviasi Virgil feud. After that, he just didn't know what else to do with him. If I'm mistaken, Diviasi would eventually become. He would later become, you know, Jimmy Hart would later become his manager. Right now it's, oh, hello, and up and over. Hey, that's a cheap shot there, Tito. Who's supposed to be the baby faces and the heels? Oh, welcome back out. Oh, welcome back outside again, Diviasi. To get in and then just to go back out. Okay. Oh, we're in now, boy. You know, DBLC and Repo Man were supposed to have been the Money Inc. team. But it would eventually become Erwin R. Scheister who would eventually become. A the, the group known as Money Incorporated. Uh, I knew I knew what the what the repo man stick was. He was the kind of guy who, if you didn't pay your taxes, he would come and repossess your personal belongings. Whether it be a bike or a television or a radio, whatever. Okay. Now, in spite of Diviasi, Diviasi actually surprisingly uh, was a pretty decent in ring technician. But it was just his larger than life character that really got the upper hands of him, you know. That really got, you know, people hating him. Not hating him because of his character. Well, basically it was his character, but but they, they, they always admired him for his his in his in ring charisma. That's kind of like what was that made Dibiasi such a a very unique and interesting character. Sure, he was a villain. Sure, he was hated by many, but they did respect just his presence. It was never a dull moment with the Million Dollar Man. What is that all about? Now Virgil needs a tag. I'm thinking it's all this Dibiase needs a tag. Dibiase's wobbling. In comes Rippo. In comes Tito. You know, Barry Darso actually had many other names too, like the Blacktop Bully, Hole in One Darso, Barry Darso. Detroit Demolition. That was those were just some of his other ring ring stuff. There's that flying forearm, a, a move that TV, that Tito Santana was famous for. That was he's gonna do another No, the trip. And Santana's outside of the equation for the time being. 
Oh wait, Wordville is not the legal name. I don't think I saw Santana's head hit the steps. One, two. Nope. If you do a little more of an enthusiastic two count there, Mr. Davis. Now, a few months later, Crush would make his return to WWF, being known as Kona Crush. Bleach blonde hair. And that's the end of number five. And number six is going to be coming up next. And it's right here, right now. You gonna miss? Nope. Well, good to you guys, huh? Santana's is trying to itch to get Virgil. Did he? He did. No. Referee, he's blind. He's got eyes in the back of his head. Too bad it's covered with hair. Okay. Any goals on it? Don Hamburger, tag in Uncle Money Bags. Can you see a double tag? Virgil's not gonna. I see it's a pretty close on. The Fairman's got a one of the two. Oh, there's a leg drop. There's a leg sweep, I should say. That's control. Hey, look up Siri. Wait. Oh, she just clocked Dibiase in the head with the with the shoe. And how is he not mad at her in any way? One, two. Jeez. He gets hit in the head with a shoe, and he. And he doesn't sell it. I mean, it was at the tip of the high heel suit that Sherry had it in. And yet, and yet, and yet, he still gets, it still gets the win. And I mean, you know, okay, I admit Repo and DiBiase had some good chemistry. Oh, thanks for the info, Niji. Oh, something, Niji. Oh, Oscar's gold brother. Slowly, slowly squeeze the life of Hulk Hogan, brother. 
Well, I don't think that's an under, that's a bit of a hyperbole. Well, because none of us got got cr our our heads crushed on a on a, a steel chair, but brother. All my little hoaxers. You can have a drink and talk to us every time you keep saying, All my little hoaxers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now we're going to the main event between The Undertaker versus Hulk Hogan, the rematch from Survivor Series. Jeez, doesn't he even put it on his waist? He's dragging it like, like, a, like he would take a little kid to cross the street. Oh, Undertaker! That's Paul Bear. Yeah, this is this is Undertaker in his young days, you know, back when. Back when he was a legitimate badass. Today, he's just an old relic. You know, it's just not his fault that... I mean, I mean, the guy is destined to retire. But it's just that the WWE just, or the WWE just does not want him to retire. That's kind of... And that kind of sucks in some ways. Because it just... I mean, The Undertaker was, you know... He was almost practically unbreakable at that time. Oh, here we go. The crowd is going wild. And here he is, Hulk Hogan. Oh yeah, ripping off that shirt. Oh yeah. Oh, they're not wasting time. Look at that. Even Paul Bear is getting into it. Paul Bear is really is also is also trying to stamp a mud hole. Oh, two heads collide, and out goes Gomez Adams. What well, lurks is to the. Oh yeah, that's right. In this match, uh, Jack Tunney is actually supposed to, you know, be there to make sure. Oh, I hope you enjoy a mouthful of sweaty bandana head. Six, eight, oh, yeah. Tony wants to make sure this is going to be a fair fight. That's the weakest looking inverted atomic drop. And that had no phase on the Undertaker. It was over a clothesline, but to no avail. Oh, 
Undertaker, he was just real scary back when he first broke in in 1991. Slams the near 300 pounder, but no selling. See? The hell happened to you, Paul Bear? Close line, but doesn't do any good. Man, Undertaker was so young back then. He was like in his, he must have been like in his, his late 20s. Well, I bet that Mr. Tunney is just as frightened by this reigning presence that is both Paul Bearer and Undertaker. Down by the hair. Ten rounds in the power reach. Seeds of no. I was gonna do something like like what Seamus does. You know what? Those ten rounds in the Bowery that he likes to call. Oh, right off the apron. Oh, I want to take their old game now. Yeah, this was back when he used to have the silver gloves. Sure. Look out. He's going to soak the life out of him. Yeah. Uh, why isn't the referee doing a count? He's, he's been, they've been out there for so long. Nobody said this was going to be a no count out match. This was just going to be a regular one on one. With the stipulations of Jack Tunney being there to make sure that. And, and why is there a second chair? That I don't understand. It was supposed to be just Tunney alone. Why is there two chairs? I don't understand that at all. A lot of his movesets back in the early days was basically choking. Why isn't he doing the countdown? It's an illegal choke. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, ref. No. Uh, he should have been disqualified. Nobody said this was a no disqualification match. Oh, he's a. Now, this guy was about like six nine, six ten. Well over three hundred pounds. Hogan was over three hundred pounds in this period of time too. But then again, most of it was just steroids. Undertaker oh, this is that the trademark rule of the Undertaker the old, the old school. The Undertaker also used that move when he was mean Mark Callis back in, uh, in WCW. Hogan's gonna take 
down the Undertaker from the outside. What's this? Oh, all right. He didn't hit, he hit his elbow. He didn't see the head. Okay, now we're coming to the last and final part of uh, this series. We're going, we're going to 7 of 7 right now. Undertaker is uh, taking his time, but then again, he has never been known for his quickness. More known for his slow, methodical ways. Gonna do a choke slam? No, a claw hold. I guess that's a legal submission hold. The Undertaker used to, used to follow some kind of power of that urn. One, no, no, he just goes on it. Look at the bears, look at the bears, look at the bears. It's all there. Look at that, look at that power of the urn. Undertaker. <laughs> I don't know like Walter's reaction. But Hogan, oh, Hogan's, Hogan's finding some life. Hogan's finding some life here. Oh. Whoa, ho, ho, that's a box. That was ill timed. That was ill timed. It was like something. A big boot to the head. Oh, a diving clothesline, even though I don't think you got all of that. But still, I like the way how Hogan is selling it. You know, I don't think he really got that much out of it. One. Oh, what kind of a week cover is that? Oh, we're going to do another, another old school. No. And he gets back up. I like that. Every time he, you think that he's down, he gets back up right away. Back in the 90s, he used to do that. Almost like a, oh, ho, ho, look who comes to the party. It's the nature boy, Ric Flair. Woo! Are we going to send some deja vu?
Oh, a nice gentle clothesline over the top, but that's not going to be. And Hogan's not going to take any of this. Ah, uh, see, I told you that's why there was a... Oh, and Jack Tony went down with them. Oh, you okay, Tony? You okay, man? That's the stick ball. That's the closest I can do the Daffy Duck. Duck season. Oh, he's still down. Oh. Oh, there he goes. He's a fool. My referees. What is it, David? Oh. Chair shot. That goes with Flair. Okay, it looks like we're gonna put, we're gonna see that leg drop. Oh, it looks like he did a jab to the eye. Oh, what's this culprit? What is this? Everybody wants to hit Undertaker. They always think of Mr. Mark. Oh, hey, hey, that's ashes. Hey, I hope that's I hope that's actually dirt and not ashes. Because if it if it's if it's some deceased relative, you know, that's that's disrespectful. One, two, three. So Hogan wins the belt, but then because of the illegal way Hogan won, you know, this of course led to the the Hogan losing the belt. And the belt would be temporarily vacant. So therefore, at the 1992 Royal Rumble, um, they eventually fought in the 30-man Royal Rumble, and the winner of that Royal Rumble would go on to become the next WWF Heavyweight Champion. So although Hogan won this match, the next day his championship belt would be vacant, and then at the Royal Rumble, whoever wins the Royal Rumble will become WWF NBA champion. This was the first time they did it. The second time they did it kind of like goes back a few years later. And uh, I believe Triple H wins. So, yeah, you know, let, let Hogan enjoy his moment, but obviously, Tani did look into it. So, let him enjoy his moment today, because tomorrow that belt will be vacant. And I guess this kind of ends everything. Some stuff. So um, overall, uh, we saw the five matches from this Tuesday in Texas. And if I was to give a scale out of it, I would probably give this one a, a five out of ten. Basically because there was no need for this pay-per-view. And personally, it was... Just a period of time where Vince McMahon had this missed opportunity. I mean, we could have possibly would have seen something that could have torn the roof off. We could have probably would have had our Hogan and Ric Flair match at WrestleMania, which would have really been something of a classic. But instead, it turned into an inevitable missed opportunity. 
and it led to a lot of people feeling very, very disappointed in the end. Just Tuesday in Texas was never really needed. I don't know why they even had it featured. And why did it have to appear six days after the Survivor Series? I remember I saw this when I was really, really young. I was only 15 at the time. And then I looked back on it just to, for the nostalgic moments. And I got to admit, this was something that was not in Vince's hands. But it was pretty much mostly for Jack Tunney and all. Uh, the, obviously, the best match on the card definitely was the Warlord and Davey Boy Smith. That was very competitive. I thought the post-match assault with Jake the Stink and Randy Savage went on a little bit too long. I guess the feud between DiBiase and Virgil was winding down, which is why it was more, mostly just lowered to a tag match. And I think it was during the time they were looking for a new partner for DiBiase and the Repo Man, but I guess that just never really materialized. So eventually, Mike Rotondo, who's going by the new gimmick of Erwin R. Scheister, the tax man, was going to be his inevitable partner. And they would have a long-going uh, tag team run as tag team champions on two or three occasions. Uh, I actually thought that there was some better chemistry with DBSC and Shyster. So, you know, that was good. Uh, at least I'll say one thing about the Bret Hart-Skinner match. It was definitely nonsensical. I would have liked to have seen a much more competitive challenge at an equal to Bret, like maybe the Barbarian, which would be kind of like a match with the, a technical guy like Bret Hart against a big, strong rugged guy like the Barbarian, or maybe even someone who was of equal wrestling skills to Brett, somebody like Rick the Model Martel. I know a rematch with Mr. Perfect was definitely out of the question because Mr. Perfect was uh, out of action for a substantial period of time because of a leg injury. And... Um, Let's see, the match between Hogan and Undertaker didn't really offer very much anything special to it. Uh, but Hogan did get some bittersweet revenge by taking the title off of the Undertaker. But of course, you all know that the next day, um, Tony would eventually strip Hogan of the title. And then at the 1992 Royal Rumble, whoever wins the Royal Rumble match will be the next WWF World Heavyweight Champion. And I guess this kind of ends it right there. This is the, this kind of ends my reaction video for you. Um, yeah, I know that this was a two-parter. Uh, I don't do this very often, but I, I hope that you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, remember, if you wish to leave a if you wish to subscribe to my channel please feel free to do so if you wish to leave a comment go right ahead but just remember the three simple easy rules be kind be courteous and please refrain from any rude comments and i'll be back again uh doing what i do best whether it be uh, another movie review i'm going to do another movie review soon i don't do this very often but i thought hey this was a special occasion and uh, yeah so i guess this kind of ends my reaction video maybe i'll do another one in the future who knows so um i guess until next time this is eric rod Ryder saying keep watching those movies enjoy yourselves and i'll see you around goodbye